Hello, it's me, French Ted, and we are here for episode number 27 in our AEW TEW series. And this is our first show since AEW All Out, the biggest show of the year, and actually our best show of the year as well. So I'll take it. Um, we've got the new rosters, new everything. Hopefully you guys saw the last episode that kind of just ran through what we're working with for this season. And yeah, let's just dive straight into it. So uh, in the pre-show, we've got the best friends. Unfortunately, they've gone from the main show of All Out to the pre-show of Dynamite. Um, but they win this time, so that's good, against the Von Eriks in 1354 when Trent wins with the strong zero. Trent Bretta is in our AEW light heavyweight tournament, uh, but he is not having his match today, obviously, because he's in a tag team match. Uh, 61, pretty good. I will take that. Uh, Marshall, though, stepping up with a 61. The the Von Eriks. I mean, well, one Von Erich, which is this one. Oh, I was getting Marshall, so that's the good one. That's the shit one. Okay. Anyways, let's just move on because it's just a tag team match. Our next pre-show match uh, includes a debut for Sari, uh, teaming up with Billy Starks against Mercedes Martinez and Sawyer Wreck. So in a pre-show match, had decent wrestling, that's good to see, and not much heat, but that's fine. Uh, Sari and Billy Starks get the win when Sari pins Sawyer Wreck with a Sunray drop kick. Uh, Sari with the starting 55, that's pretty good, we can work with that. Mercedes Martinez, you know, just putting the numbers in. She's not someone that I think I'm ever going to push, but she's one of those, like, workhorses. You know what I mean? Like, I can always trust her in a match. So, uh, yeah, very happy to have her on the roster. 53 overall. I'll take it. And then in our final pre-show segment, this is kind of just like a, just as the show's kicking off announcement, but I didn't want it to be our opening segment. Uh, it's just our three new commentators of Dynamite, which is Taz, Escalaver, and Jim Ross. Um, also, our collision commentators are um, Tony Schiavone, um, Paul White, aka The Big Show, and Stokely Hathaway. Yes, he has been promoted. Well, not promoted. He's just not no longer a manager. Actually, I need to change managers. Mental note, change managers. Because um, I haven't edited any managers. <laughs> um, either way, let's just shut the fuck up, Ted. Um, this is just an announcement where the uh, commentators are just putting over that Bullet Club Gold's newest member, aka CM Punk, will be in tag team action tonight against FTR. I just had to think for a second. FTR, yes, yeah, a big match. Jay White has requested that him and his new Bullet Club Gold member uh, team up together and they wanted some competition and FTR stepped up and was like, we'll take you guys on. Obviously, FTR have a kind of history with cm punk so yeah that is our main event for tonight but that's the pre-show done that's the opening announcement done let's head straight into the main show and who else was going to kick the show off i mean you could have said our world champion but i don't think mjf would let him speak uh, mjf comes out he opens the show titleless oh it looks weird it looks weird without a belt oh i don't want to see that uh, he comes out the crowd a, a mixture of cheers and boos because I feel like MJF has earned the respect of the crowd, but also, you know, he's a twat. So uh, he comes out and basically is just beside himself. He's angry. He said that All Out was a complete fluke. He said that Tony Khan had him wrestling week in, week out, three title defenses in less than a month. He said, What is that? That's ridiculous. Like, that's not normal. You know, I'm trying to make excuses and just saying, As I did lose at All Out, I am entitled to a rematch and I want that rematch right fucking now to which good old nige comes out our new um face of the business nigel mcginnis comes out and just says mjf i completely understand how you feel tough luck on the loss at all out it was an incredible show and an incredible match um and you are right you do get your rematch and don't worry you will have your rematch but you will not be having it tonight it will happen soon, do not worry. It will happen before full gear, but it will not be tonight, MJF. And MJF is obviously losing his mind and Nigel's just like, soz, and just walks off. So yeah, that's how we open the show. Uh, MJF wants his rematch. Nigel confirms that he's getting the rematch, but just not tonight. He's gonna have to be a little bit patient. Although I'm not too sure if that is in uh, MJF to be patient. Either way. 
We move on to our first match of the new series, which is also our first match of the AEW World Light Heavyweight Championship Tournament. And it's Daniel Garcia against Roderick Strong in a 78. Ooh. So in a bout that had good wrestling and a decent reaction from the crowd, Daniel Garcia gets the win in 24 minutes with the sharpshooter. I had this marked as a technical masterclass, which is something I haven't used much, and I'm quite happy how it turned out. I was expecting this to be doo-doo numbers, but um, Strong with a 73, nice. Garcia with a 70, decent. And they've got pretty good chemistry. Ho <laughs> ho! Shame it's the one and only time they'll face each other for a while. Uh, so Daniel Garcia is our first winner in the tournament and advances to the next round. 78, love that. Let's move on. Uh, we've got some singles action with uh, Samantha DeMartin, who recently moved from Collision to Dynamite, facing off against Diona Perazzo. And in a decent match, DeMartin gets the wing with her big, big boot. A 61 rated match, decent. DeMartin with a 50, okay. Perazzo with a 65, okay. And they've got chemistry as well. I i don't know what's happening, but even at All Out, I think there was like two or three matches, maybe even more, that said they have good chemistry. I'll take it. Like I need to make a mental note of these because I, I, it flags up when they don't have good chemistry when I book matches. It's like warning, some of them have bad chemistry. But when it comes to good chemistry, it doesn't want to tell me. So I might need to make a, a new tab on my spreadsheet with uh, good chemistries. Uh, but yeah, uh, Perazzo's getting better at her gimmick as well, so that's only going to help her performance. Solid match. Good showing from both these. Nice. Following this, though, Christian Cage comes out, and obviously he's not happy. He said that he spoke to Tony Khan and Nigel McGuinness uh, in the week and requested his rematch against Will Ospreay, and they were told that Will Ospreay will not be at Dynamite tonight because he has engagements, prior engagements in Japan. So Christian Cage has come out, took it upon himself and just said, why should we have a champion in AEW who doesn't turn up to AEW? AEW should not be the number two company for anyone. And if that's the case, they shouldn't even be here. They shouldn't be recognized as all elite. They, that shouldn't be advertised. They shouldn't be able to compete. And he was like, my title, the title that I own is in Japan right now when it should be defended tonight on this show. And if I'm being honest, I kind of agree with Christian. Uh, it's a little bit shit that he isn't here, Will Ospreay, after signing him. Um, but I get why Japan would take precedent. Uh, annoyingly, there's a few people on Dynamite who aren't here tonight that are in Japan, uh, such as Carl Fletcher, Mark Davis. I think Jeff Cobb as well is currently in Japan. Alex Coughlin. Yeah, that's like six people. <laughs> um, so I'm going to have to look at their contract situation and see if there's a way I can tempt them to to be here instead of Japan. Will's going to be hard. The rest of them shouldn't be too hard. But yeah, Cage is just slagging off Will Ospreay. And whose music hits? It's Lance Archer, who did make an appearance at All Out and helped Will Ospreay win the FTW World title. And he just comes out and just tells Christian to shut his mouth um, and says that Will is 10 times the wrestler that Christian ever has been. And uh, Christian might not be here, but I am. And if you come for a fight... I'll take it, uh, to which Luchasaurus steps forward um, and Christian goes, I mean, you can have your fight, but as always, you have to get through Luchasaurus. Uh, so six, seven, eight segment, nice, everyone's chatting, chatting, and in an extremely short match, Lance Archer defeats Luchasaurus in four minutes with the blackout. So Lance Archer, an incredibly dominant display here, because Luchasaurus isn't someone to just, you know, lie down. But Archer just seems to have a new lease of life recently. Um, and yeah, destroys Luchasaurus with a 70 performance. Nice. I will take that. Um, so Christian obviously shit scared. Now he's like, whoa, maybe I shouldn't fuck with Lance Archer. Um, but that ends this segment. You know, Luchasaurus rolls out the ring. Christian kind of helps him up slightly. And they back off while Archer stands tall with Jake Roberts at the side. Following this match, we have an interview with cm punk dash is chatting to cm punk just being like punk you're in the main event tonight teaming up with your new uh teammate partner um as you are now a bullet club gold member um you know how have you settled in it's only been a few days but you know what's it been like and just as cm punk goes to 
talk. Jay White comes in, bang, bang. And he's just like, oh, it's great having Punk in Bullet Club Gold. I mean, we just go from strength to strength. It was me and Rock Hard Juice. We bring him the monster that is Keith Lee. We then add the high-flying capabilities of Hard Rock, Chris Bay. And now we've got the best in the world, CM Punk. Bullet Club Gold just gets shinier and shinier as the weeks progress. And tonight, the Bang Bang Club, CM Punk, Jay White are going to teach FTR one hell of a lesson. Come on. And then he just kind of drags Punk away and Punk's just like, oh, okay. So we, we don't know whether Punk's happy to be here or not, but um, he is competing tonight with Jay White, the man that he wanted to, you know, put to sleep. Um, and now he's working with him. So, uh, yeah, good segment, 75, I'll take it. Um, let's follow this on with uh, Chris Bay's match. So Chris Bay heads to the ring in his first match um, in the tournament. And in a decent match, Chris Bay gets the win over AR Fox. So Chris Bay um, of the Bang Bang Club, Bullet Club Gold, advances. Unfortunately, AR Fox, a little bit um, unfortunate because I feel that he probably is the better wrestler. Um but yeah, Fox with a 62, Bay with a 59. The crowd aren't happy because these are technically like, you know, jobbers or um, pre-show workers as they like to call them. Um, but I see potential in both these guys. They're both great. Um, so yeah, Chris Bay advances. Uh, so nice, nice. I think in the bracket, I've done this in order. So it should be Daniel Garcia, Chris Bay. I know that I start to mix it up soon, but um, yeah, we'll check the tournament rankings after the full round one is done. But Chris Bay advances. Not much to say about this match. A uh, little bit of a stinker. But that, I think that's just mainly due to popularity. Because this would be a great high-flying match. Um, following this, though, we've got a backstage interview with the Young Bucks. Uh, Matt and Nick. Nick is still slightly nursing his injury. But he said that he'll be fit and ready for his round one match. Uh, they're both kind of talking about how excited they are to be in singles competition. They're like, obviously, we're the Young Bucks. We've tag-teamed for, you know years and years and years uh we love tag teaming with each other that's never gonna stop but this is quite an exciting prospect of either me or my brother to get some singles uh gold and we support each other and we're we're very much looking forward to to our matches renee then highlights that the way the bracket is lined up means that they will meet each other in the semi-finals of the dynamite bracket should they both win their win all of their matches and Matt and Nick just kind of look at each other and just be like, well, may the best buck win. Uh, so, yeah. Nice little segment, fun little segment. I want to try out these two as single stars. Not to say <clears throat> the Young Bucks are breaking up at all because, you know, we can't. That's not a thing, is it? I don't think they ever would. It'd be one hell of a storyline if they did. But um, for now, we're just seeing how they fare as singles because then that offers a bit more flexibility. 74-rated uh, segment, nice. I will take it. Uh, we here stay backstage where Chris Jericho uh, obviously is celebrating with Paige Van Zandt and Jake Hager, but he issues an open call to anyone in the locker room who wants to sign up to be a friend of Jericho to compete for the trio's belts because he has not forgotten about Wheeler Utah and he wants to embarrass him just like he embarrassed Chris Jericho. So Jericho, Hager, and to be confirmed, anyone who wants to step up and become a friend of Jericho so um, who's gonna step up I have no idea um, I legit have no idea uh, so we'll have to wait and see to see if anyone wants to um, I mean Paige could probably step in and do some work but uh, I think she's fine where she is at the moment after this segment we have our third and final tournament match of the night um, and it is Orange Cassidy taking on Cedric Alexander so in a bout that had good wrestling and a decent reaction from the crowd, Orange Cassidy gets a win against Cedric in 9 minutes 45 with the beach break. Uh, so that means Orange Cassidy advances to the next round and Cedric is unfortunately knocked out. Orange Cassidy with a 70, that's decent, and Cedric with a 62, 68 overall. Nice. Uh, so that's three people through so far. There are no more through in this show because I'm having to obviously try and spread them out as best as possible. But I also want to get through it without having to do a mad rush at the end. So, um, yeah, Orange Cassidy through. We head backstage where MJF is still kicking off about life. And he bumps into Ron Killings. And Ron Killings is just like, whoa, whoa, MJF, my dude. 
you need to relax. Like, Nigel said you'd get your rematch, so, you know, breathe. <sighs> breathe and then obviously orange cassidy has just finished his match and is coming backstage and he's like you need to chill be be like orange juice cassidy and orange cassidy kind of just stops for a second looks over and our truth is just like smiling at him and orange just little thumbs up ron killings little thumbs up and they kind of like thumbs up for a little bit too long to each other and mjf is just in the middle of this like what and then just pushes through them and the camera just stays on Ron and Orange just holding a thumbs up and then it just fades to the next segment. So seems like uh, Ron Killings thinks that his name is Orange Juice Cassidy um, and they have been thumbsing up for the last 10 hours. Uh, MJF obviously no longer uh, hasn't calmed down at all. In that fact, he's probably more angry because <laughs> now he's got to deal with these two backstage. Um, but yeah, fun little segment just to introduce Ron Killings and uh, maybe a potential teasing of a partnership, who knows? Um, after this though, it is our main event. It is Bullet Club Gold, aka CM Punk. God, who'd have thought we'd be saying that? And Jay White against FTR. Let's go. 76. I thought it'd be better than that, I'm not going to lie. Um, at least... Jay White and CM Punk don't have bad chemistry with each other. Um, Punk with an 85, though. So in a superb match, Jay White and CM Punk defeat FTR in 22-27 when CM Punk makes Cash Wheeler submit. Uh, Punk with an 85, Jay White 77, Cash and Dax around the 70s. The Bang Bang Club storyline has advanced and gained heat, and obviously FTR have great chemistry. So Jay White and CM Punk work together i guess um it wasn't much of a uh, fluid match they were definitely um acting like single stars and it wasn't until either one of them was starting to get a bit overwhelmed that they thought oh shit let me just tag in jay white of course kept tagging cm punk in and punk's just like ugh. so this was very much a punk carry for the most part um, and then jay white would just sneak himself in every now and then do a bit of damage sneak back out but uh great work from everyone involved fun little main event um, and CM Punk seems to be fitting into Bullet Club Gold, whether he likes it or not. Uh, 76 rated. That does end our show, but we do have a final post-show segment. Um, and this is an announcement that I was told about uh, maybe two or three weeks ago, but I completely forgot to add it to any episode. So I'm adding it now because there's less than 30 days left. Um, Mercedes Monet is um, going to be leaving us shortly to film a television series we do not know how long she will be out for um for the television series i'm assuming it'll be a couple of months probably like three months three six months i'm hoping it's on the shorter side um but in the next 30 days mercedes Monet will be leaving us to film a tv series maybe more of the mandalorian because i think she was in that or maybe something new who knows but super exciting opportunity for mercedes we wish her luck um and we wish her to come back sooner rather than later because she is probably our biggest star in the women's division uh 74 doesn't count towards the show score but let's see how we did 80 overall nice one nice standard show this wasn't anything too crazy uh we had a fun main event a really strong opening match and obviously mjf being mjf um yeah orange cassidy chris bay and daniel garcia progress samantha de martin getting a nice win and the osprey new japan problem uh, is slowly growing so I'm going to have to take a look at that and see what we can do uh, but yeah that was Dynamite uh, thank you for watching guys let's jump over to AEW Collision and see what's happening over there and we are here for Collision um, I've noticed that we've got the wrong Collision logo I've managed to find one that is the real Collision logo so next episode we'll get that updated uh, but we are here, first collision of the new season, and we'll have more tournament matches, and we will hear from and see our new World Heavyweight Champion, Hangman Adam Page. Very exciting stuff. Uh, but in the pre-show, we've got two matches. Uh, TJ are reunited, both of them free from the shackles of the JAS. Um, obviously, uh, Anna J was kicked out, um, and Tay Mello eventually left as well because jericho abandoned the stable but this is the first time they've been on the same brand without 
the JAS attached to their name. So yeah, by choice, they've reunited um, and they face off against the Renegade Twins and win. Uh, Tay Mello gets the pin with the Taya Goshi. Uh, Tay Mello doing really well, 59 carrying the match, which is great to see. Um, and yeah, she's back with her bestie and Sammy Guevara is also there ringside. So yeah, love that. Let's continue with our pre-show, which is uh, Eddie Kingston and Brian Cage, the final pre-show match. Uh, yeah, just want to give Eddie Kingston some more matches and screen time, which you might see more of later. And Brian Cage is just a big muscly sponge to get beaten down on. Poor Brian Cage. Uh, but 64 overall, not bad. Eddie Kingston with a 65. Brian Cage with a 56 with the blackout lariat. Uh, but that does take us into our main show, and we open with a match. Uh, more specifically, one of the AEW World Light Heavyweight Championship matches is Darby Allen, fresh off of retiring Sting, against El Hijo del Vikingo. 77. Oh, what a start to the show. And in about, they had good wrestling and a decent reaction from the crowd. Darby Allen gets the win in 13 39 with the coffin drop. Uh, Darby with a 75 and Vikingo with a 67. And this got the show off to a strong star and why wouldn't it you've got Darby Allen and Vikingo who just always gets the crowd pumping uh yeah great opening match unlucky for Vikingo losing in the first round but he is up against who I would say is one of the favorites in this competition uh Darby Allen so yeah Darby Allen progresses to the next round following this though we hear from our new world heavyweight champion Hangman Page and he comes out celebrating bandidos with him who has a match later on tonight as well uh just celebrating that he is the new world heavyweight champion he told everyone that he'd do it he vows to be a fighting champion he's not going to be cowardly like mjf was um, if anyone steps up and challenges him there's going to be no excuses he'll put that belt on the line as and when to whoever steps up and he also gives a little nod to bandido saying couldn't have done it without my amigo he was there for me and i wish him the best in the light um the world light heavyweight competition and hopefully both of us can have the gold around our waist uh, but as he's wrapping up his little promo the lucha brothers music hits and you think hold on what's going on uh, ray fenix comes out with pentagon jr and ray fenix says i've been the best performing wrestler in AEW for the past year um we may have you know had our number one contendership however long ago it was uh, but I think I'm deserving of a title shot. So if you're a man of your words, Hangman, let's do it tonight. And of course, Hangman Page, being the beautiful face that he is, says, you're on, I'll see you tonight. So main event announced for tonight, Hangman Adam Page already defending his AEW World Heavyweight Championship against Ray Fenix, who in my eyes has been one of the best performers of the series so far. Man is averaging mid 80s to 90s every single match. So yeah, hopefully that is going to be one hell of a main event. But first, we are hearing in a backstage segment from Britt Baker, who has Hikaru Shida by her side. Hikaru Shida, who is from the Dynamite brand, but as she is the world champion, she can float between the two. Uh, so Britt just says that she's not worried about her and Hikaru being split by the, uh, by the brands, because as long as Hikaru Shida remains world champion, they're going to stay together on collision. So that means Hikaru is probably not going to be showing up on Dynamite unless Britt Baker's there. So um, very confident from these two. Apparently, no one can beat Shida. So the brand split doesn't even matter when it comes to them two. Uh, we will have to wait and see because uh, there will be many people wanting to have a shot at Shida's belt. And this got a 75. Wow. Go on, Britt. Great promo. And Hikaru as well. Um, yeah, they're a great duo. Uh, ever since turning on Jamie Hayter, so it'd be very exciting to see who steps up. Um, which, if I'm if I'm putting money on it, I'd probably say Paige Van Zant's in the best position to step up. Um, I would have said maybe Mercedes Monet, but she's off in a bit, so it'd be silly to to have her strap how strap the belt on her. Uh, we do head to the ring now, where we've got some women's tag team action, and it's uh, it's another um, reuniting of former teammates, and it's Tony Storm and Ruby Soho teaming up and facing Emi Sakura and Yuka Sakazaki. So in a decent wrestling match that didn't have much heat, Tony Storm and Soho defeat Emi Sakura and Yuka Sakazaki in 11.58 when Tony, Tony Storm wins with a strong zero. 
uh, Ruby Soho, as you can see, sporting a uh, different coloured hair now. So does this mean that the outcasts are no more? Because their colours were black and green. Obviously, uh, Soraya is on the Dynamite brand, so she's separated from her outcast members. But Storm and Soho reunited. Uh, looking at the numbers here, Yuka Sakazaki performed the best, uh, with Storm just behind, followed by Soho. And uh, right at the back is Emi Sakura. 55 overall, I'll take it. We have got more tag team action. It's a new tag team. It's a tag team that has come up from Ring of Honor. And for some reason, this is the name that Ring of Honor gave them. And I thought, fuck it, let's keep it. So we've got High Five defeating Ortiz and Santana. I'm not too sure why they're called High Five. I get the high because, you know, they're high flying wrestlers, but who knows? Uh, yes, Action Andretti, who has been renamed as Andretti. Uh, we're pulling a WWE on him. And uh, Darius Martin. So yeah, they get the win in what was, I imagine, a crazy fun match because it got the crowd buzzing. 67 as well, that's really good. Um, Andretti was the weak link though, uh, which is a surprise because if you ask me on paper, I'd say that he's probably the best in real life. Uh, with a 51, and uh, Ortiz and Santana super consistent in their mid-60s and Darius with a 61. It does say though that Andretti was off his game, so that could be why he got the low rating. But 67 overall, nothing to, uh, nothing to scoff at. Um, we head backstage now, I believe. Yes, and it's the Combat Club hitting a sweet, sweet promo. So John Moxley's just talking about how, you know, he's done with Brian Danielson. And thanks to the brand split, Brian Danielson's all the way over in Dynamite. So they don't have to deal with him. Only as and when they have to defend their belts on Dynamite is when they might cross paths. But that chapter is over. The new chapter's begun and it's fully focused on the Combat Club taking over AEW and Moxley very strongly hints at a world heavyweight title opportunity in the future just claiming I've beaten the best I deserve to be the best um, and all while he's cutting this promo you know he's getting very angry he's shouting they're all trying to look menacing in the background you know Zack Sabre Jr and his collarbones um, where Eddie Kingston uh, you just hear a little <laughs> off camera the camera pans and it's just Kingston looking at Mox shaking his head and just kind of chuckling at him to which Mox is like, what? And Kingston just laughs and walks off. Uh, so Eddie Kingston still disapproving of Moxley and the Combat Club's antics. As we saw before All Out, he uh, kind of called them out on their shit. Where, and then he ended up having to face Claudio. But yeah, Eddie Kingston still has a little bit of beef with the Combat Club. So we'll have to see where that goes. Uh, but again, great improvisation from Moxley and Kingston. 83 overall. I will take that. We head back to the ring now, where it's uh, Bandido's turn to have a match. He's facing off against Roosh in his first round match of the uh, AEW World Light Heavyweight Tournament. And 78, nice. And in a bout that had good wrestling and a decent reaction from the crowd, Bandido gets the win against Roosh in 13.54 with a Revolution Fly. So he now advances as well, the same as Darby Allen tonight. Uh, Bandido with a 70, Roosh with a 72. Roosh has got surprisingly well not surprisingly good number because he's great but he's he's pretty consistent too uh him and andrade which is why i quite like pushing that team uh but yeah 78 rated match that is very good um so far we're doing very very good with our matches let's hope that continues all the way through to the main event uh, but after this segment uh renee gets hold of the reunited tony storm and ruby soho and just says guys Good to be back together. And uh, Tony and Ruby go, yeah, like it doesn't feel like a, a day's been missed since we last teamed up. And um, Renee also said, thoughts on Soraya on the other brand? And they're like, hmm, we don't have any thoughts really. And just kind of like smirks to each other and walk off. So I think there might have been a little bit of beef between Soraya and the other two members of the outcast. Tony Storm, who didn't do much when she was on Dynamite, but seemed quite happy. And um, if I remember correctly, Soho and Soraya didn't pick up many wins at all while it was just the two of them. So maybe Tony Storm was that happy glue that they needed. Uh, but 64 rate segment, nice, nothing to say. Uh, let's continue with the show, which we have our third and final tournament match. Uh, it's Matt Seidel facing off against Buddy Matthews. And in a decent match, Matt Seidel gets the win against Buddy Matthews. Didn't see that coming with the shooting star press. Oh, I can see why. Uh, during the match, we had Malachi Black and Brody King attack Buddy Matthews. So maybe that time apart made 
Malachi and Brody realise that they no longer want or need Buddy Matthews in House of Black. Uh, so I think we can take this as a, you're out kid, you're on your own. Which is probably a good reason as to why Buddy's brought in Adam Brooks. So at least uh, he's got a friend. Um, but yeah, I think uh, Buddy Matthews is officially no longer a House of Black member. Matt Seidel with a 56. Buddy with a 63. 64 rated match. Not the best, but it's okay. Uh, Buddy, surprisingly, um, has been kicked out of not just House of Black, but also the AEW World Light Heavyweight Championship. And Matt Seidel progresses. Awesome. Happy for Matt. Great, great wrestler. Um, after this, though, we've got a backstage segment where Nigel McGuinness is mind his own business, eating a croissant, I don't know, uh, when he is, you know, called out. Uh, he is, Nigel, Nigel, and he turns around, and it's uh, Sammy Guevara and Tay Mello. And Sammy's just wondering, Nigel, what, like, I've been trying to get hold of Tony Khan, and he doesn't seem to be answering, and Nigel's like, well, Tony's a busy man, as you know, which is why I've been hired. So he goes, okay, well, I'll ask you. Um how come i'm not in the world light heavyweight tournament like i'm one of the the best young stars in the company i fit the weight limits like what's that about and nigel's like oh, okay well that's not something that i decided on i couldn't pass your message on to tony but i don't know when you know it's going to get to him and also nothing's going to change now because we've already got the bracket and the tournament's underway so i'm really sorry sammy um but when there is a winner announced, you've got every right to challenge the champion slash earn your spot. Uh, so, yeah, sorry, mate. Uh, so, yeah, Guevara not very happy um, about being left out of the tournament. And uh, I'll put my hands up. Completely forgot about him. That's why he's not in the tournament. But don't tell Sammy that, because then he'll get angry. Um, at least I'm pushing his wife, you know, so he can shut the fuck up. <laughs> but, yeah, Sammy not in the tournament. A little bit annoyed though, because I feel like he would have done some good matches, but he is not there, and he's just going to have to bide his time, I guess. Uh, find some other opportunities, mate. <laughs> um, but that segment is our final segment of the evening, because we have our main event. The main event that was confirmed earlier on in this show is Hangman Adam Page defending his World Heavyweight Championship for the first time against Ray Fenix, one half of our AEW World tag team champions let's go 83 okay i'll take that uh, so in an exceptional match hangman adam page of course he does he defends his title by defeating ray fenix in 22 minutes with the buckshot lariat and this is defense number one of his AEW world heavyweight championship hangman page gets an 84 rating and ray fenix with an 85 oh go on ray uh, there were times when there was a lack of psychology. That's fair enough. I did look because um, that came up with the MJF Hangman match. I think Hangman's 70 or 71, which is a good number. But for matches to go on quite long, you need a bit more psychology. Um, Ray Phoenix, I haven't looked at, obviously. We can look at it later. Uh, but MJF was um, early to mid 80s. So I think it was on Hangman's part. Either way, uh, 83 rating. Solid main event. Really good. Uh, but that is not the final segment. Uh, Hangman Page celebrates in the ring with Bandido, grabs his microphone, shakes Fenix's hand because, you know, great match. Adam Adam Page is a great sport. You know, he's going to be like this. Um, he grabs the mic and he just says, I heard that uh, I was being called out on Dynamite by Maxwell Jacob Friedman. And I'm just here to say, Max, I'll see you next week at Dynamite. And he just drops the mic. The crowd are like, oh, shit, are we going to get another title match? Uh, so Adam Page has confirmed that he will be on Dynamite next week and he will be seeing MJF there. So who knows what's going to happen between them. I mean, if Adam Page wants to put his title on the line, go for it, my son. Um, yeah, 89 rated segment. Awesome. Got the crowd buzzing. Well, it didn't, but I'm going to pretend it did. Uh, and that is how we end our show. It does say next segment. That's just because we've got another post-match announcement. Don't worry. No one else is leaving us to film a TV show like Mercedes Monet is. Um, we just have an announcement of what our main event will be next week on Collision. And it will be the debut of Shinsuke Nakamura. And not just that, he will be having his debut as per his own request against Konosuke Takeshita. So it will be Nakamura facing off against Takeshita in our main event next week. I, for one, 
I'm very much looking forward to that. Um, and his King of Strong Style gimmick got an initial rating of great. Awesome. So let's see how this show did. 82. Awesome. I'll take that. Uh, I mean, our popularity is growing like crazy. I think we're like 76, 77 now in the US. So we just need to maintain shows higher than that. And we're doing it. So, well, hey. Uh, yeah, great show. Um, awesome opening match. Awesome match in the middle. Awesome match at the end. You, like, you can't ask for anything better than that. And then we've got some great little things happening in between. Uh, so, yeah, we're just going to have to see what happens. Eddie Kingston, you know, kind of taking the piss, I guess, out of Moxley and the Combat Club. So, we'll have to see what happens there. Um, Britain Sheeta clearly, you know, oozing with confidence. So, someone's going to have to step up and try and shut them up. Uh, yeah, and Hangman proving that he is a fighting champion and did so in the main event. Can't ask for anything more, I guess. Uh, but that does end this week's show. Thank you very much for watching, everyone. Please like, comment, subscribe, etc. And I will see you all in the next one. Bye.